All right, so I just got back from my little Thanksgiving holiday outing with friends and family. I think we had a pretty good time, right? We did all the traditional shit. We had the sit down meal where everybody goes around the table and you say what you're thankful for and you tell everybody that you love them and you miss them, right? Normal things that normal human beings do at a time like this. Now, unfortunately, not everyone around the country had that same energy this Thanksgiving and uh, Representative Lauren Boebert from Colorado pretty much took the cake in terms of uh, how racist her tirade was this Thanksgiving. And this is somewhat of a time honored American tradition, especially for white American households, where you're always going to have that one family member who gets a little bit too drunk, maybe, and a little bit too racist on this holiday event, and uh, she really beats all of them, because she basically implies in this, as you are about to see, that representative, a, a Muslim representative, Ilhan Omar, uh, is actually a suicide bomber to some extent. So let's go ahead and watch what she had to say here. Actually, I have an Ilhan story for you. So... <laughs> so, uh... The other night on the House floor was not the, my first Jihad Squad moment. Uh, so I was getting into an elevator with one of my staffers. And he and I are we're leaving the Capitol. We're going back to my office. And we get in the elevator. And I see a Capitol Police officer running hurriedly to the elevator. I see fret all over his face. And he's reaching. And I'm like, what? I can't, the door's shutting. Like, I can't, I can't open it. Like, what's happening? I look to my left, and there she is, oh. Ilhan Omar. Oops. And I said, well, if she doesn't have a backpack, we should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we only had one floor to go, and I was like, ah, do I say it or not? I looked Ooh. over, and I said, oh, look, the Jihad Squad decided to show up for work today. <laughs> oh. Staffers on Twitter the talk for her. She she's not tough in person. She doesn't yes. <laughs> so but there's a little bit of interactions with these folks there. Right. Okay. So first off, um, the thing that's the funniest about this, I guess, which it's not really funny because she's just very obviously a racist piece of shit. But the thing that's the funniest about all of this is that the story at face value is not even really believable. Right. And we're going to get to Ilhan Omar explaining that, yeah, she did just make up this entire story. This entire event did not actually even happen. But even just listening to what she was just saying didn't really make any sense. What? So you were at the Capitol building, you, you got into an elevator with one of your staffers and you didn't notice that Ilhan Omar was in the elevator with you and then a Capitol Police officer who presumably works in the Capitol building with Ilhan Omar uh, saw her in an elevator and then was so freaked out by her presence that he was running over to, to catch the elevator to stop her. I mean, like the, the whole story from top to bottom just doesn't even make any sense. Now, again, on top of that, let's go ahead and hear from what Ilhan Omar had to respond to this. So she, her, her first response here was, fact, this buffoon looks down when she sees me in the Capitol. This whole story is made up. Sad that she thinks that bigotry gets her clout. Anti-Muslim bigotry isn't funny and shouldn't be normalized. Congress can't be a place where hateful and dangerous Muslim tropes get no condemnation. So this is like, you know, bare minimum. She's 100% accurate, 100% correct. And uh, honestly, I applaud Ilhan Omar for not going absolutely balls to the wall and uh, condemning and, and, and criticizing uh, Lauren Boebert for the deranged lunatic that she actually is. But again, she just made the fucking story up. So if you're going to be racist, I mean, at least don't lie about the racism, I guess. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know if that's even a compromise. But I mean, still, she just made the whole story up. That's the best part about all of this. So she goes and tells a public story in front of a, a public forum of people as she is giving this speech, and she just fucking made the whole story up. So again, on top of that, she ends this by saying, you know, she didn't have a backpack, right? Obviously implying that Ilhan Omar would be something of a suicide bomber, I guess. That's the implication. That's the joke that she is trying to make because, you know, uh, all Muslims are terrorists in the mind of somebody like Lauren Boebert, who is in fact herself much closer to being a domestic terrorist than Ilhan Omar uh, would ever be in a million lifetimes. But I mean, again, she ended this by saying like Ilhan Omar isn't a confrontational person, that she isn't like, you know, somebody who, who, who talks tough or she is somebody who talks tough on Twitter, but can't back it up in real life as if like Lauren Boebert wants to physically fight Ilhan Omar. I don't really, you know, I don't really understand what the point of any of that story actually was other than just doing a racism for the sake of doing a racism for the crowd and, and getting some applause from them, I guess. So that's the entire context, right? I don't really have much to add onto it because you just saw the whole thing right there. The whole joke is 
uh, Ilhan Omar is a Muslim and Muslims are terrorists. So therefore, you know, I had to calm the nerves of this Capitol Police officer uh, and say that she didn't have a backpack on her. It's just, it's, it's just stupid. It's just really stupid and cowardly and uh, like really baby shit, really. I mean, this is like something that like a teenager would make as a joke. Now, she followed it up here, Ilhan Omar saying again, um, that saying I am a suicide bomber is no laughing matter. GOP leader and Speaker Pelosi need to take appropriate action. Normalizing this bigotry not only endangers my life, but the lives of all Muslims, which, yeah, of course it is. I mean, Ilhan Omar, AOC, the rest of the squad, they already get so many death threats all the time from lunatic right-wing conservatives who believe things like the things that Lauren Boebert is saying. And so literally calling her, you know, member of the Jihad squad, which is in and of itself stupid, which I'll talk about in a second here, but I mean, it, it, calling her a suicide bomber is elevating that to even another level on top of that by implying that Ilhan Omar is somehow like a literal physical threat and therefore deserves violence wielded against her to stop that threat. So it's just, you know, it's really dangerous on top of everything else. But again, on top of even that, she says she's part of the Jihad squad, right? This is not the only time that she has brought this up, right? So Lauren Boebert came out and apologized for this. She apologized to the Muslim community and said, oh, if I offended anybody with my comment about Representative Omar, I have reached out to her office to speak. What are you going to speak with her about? Okay, we all, we all just saw the clip. Okay, we don't need additional context. There wasn't any additional like meaning that people were supposed to get from that, that we that we missed the page on, on what exactly you were trying to imply there. I don't, I don't really know what, what there is to talk about. I don't, if I was Ilhan Omar, I would not be talking to this person. She is an absolute lunatic who has been doing this uh, for a very long time. She has been doing this for the entire duration that she has been in Congress. Again, um, and she says here at the end, there are plenty of policy differences to focus on without this unnecessary distraction, as if she herself was not the person who did the entire made up story to do a racism as an unnecessary distraction. Like you you were the one who just did that. If you wanted to talk about policy, then talk about policy. Ilhan Omar talks about policy all the fucking time. Go debate Ilhan Omar on Medicare for all, on a $15 minimum wage, on, you know, the issue of even like Palestine and Israel. Go debate her on that if that's what you want to do. But you're the one who's not focusing on policy. She is very focused on policy all the time, okay? You're the one who just made up a story out of out of thin air to do a racism, okay? So I, again, I don't, I, if I was Ilhan Omar, I would not be giving this person a single second of my time, okay? She's an absolute lunatic. But again, this is not the, the first time that she has used that phrase, the jihad squad, okay? And so in the, you know, uh, in, in the stupid mind, the simpleton mind of somebody like Lauren Boebert, she doesn't even understand what the word jihad means. To her, the word jihad just means terrorism, I guess. But the word jihad has multiple different interpretations, multiple different contexts that it can be used. In many cases, it just means a struggle within oneself or a struggle within the faith. And so for her to just imply as if the jihad squad, like Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and uh, presumably a number of others who are in the squad and who defend things like Palestinian rights, um, she's just lumping them in as like the terrorism squad. That's what she's trying to imply by using that word, the jihad squad. So again, she can apologize all she wants, but what are you really apologizing for if you're going to continue using rhetoric and language like this all the time, okay? She just did this a couple days ago and then followed it up by doing it again uh, yesterday or two days ago now. So it's like, this is not the first time. This is not going to be the last time. And if Ilhan Omar and her got together to talk about this, it's not going to change absolutely anything because this is her entire purpose in Congress. She is the deranged right-wing lunatic who does racism all the time in order to fundraise and in order to uh, give herself some more clout. So this is exactly who she is. She's not going to change her ways because she's not there to act in good faith. She's not there to actually represent anybody. She is there to be an absolute lunatic, okay? That's exactly what she is. That's exactly what she always has been. And so, you know, a credit to Ilhan Omar for standing up during this moment. And she did absolutely dunk on her last time that she said the Jihad Squad. Here's what she had to say. She said, luckily my dad raised me right. Otherwise, I might have gone to the floor to talk about this insurrectionist who sleeps with a pervert, which is a known fact that Lauren Boebert's husband uh, actually did expose himself at a bowling alley to minors. So sleeps with a pervert. And uh, I am grateful that I was raised to be a decent human being and not a depraved person who shamefully defecated uh, and defiles the House of Representatives. So, listen, I mean, she's 100% right, and she's absolutely obliterating Lauren Boebert, so all credit to Ilhan Omar for standing her ground and, you know, not backing down from some of these fights, but it's just absolutely wild to see that this is a literal member of Congress, and not just a member of Congress, but, like, this is the future of the Republican Party, okay? That is the broader picture in all of this. Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Paul uh, Gosar, all of the rest of these extreme fringe lunatics, that is the future of the Republican Party, because they're never going to hold them accountable. They will continue to expand their ranks within Congress, um, and they 
will continue to be polarizing and ridiculous and uh, really inciting violence with all of the rhetoric that they are using. So none of this is going to change with an apology or a meeting between them. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, this is just an, a completely deranged lunatic who is sitting in one of the most, uh, one of the highest positions of power within our government. And it just shows you how absolutely insane and backwards this country actually is.